Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is uh, lecture number three. The name of the paper is Criticism One. The topic is Aristotle's criticism of Plato and his replies to Plato's charges against poetry and poets. This lecture is specifically for the students of B.S. English fifth semester GDC Pabi and also for the students of those colleges which are affiliated with Abdul Wali Khan University. In lecture number first and second, we talked about what is criticism and we came to the conclusion that criticism actually means evaluation, finding good and bad in some literary work. Then we talked about the construction of the Republic, that it is written in dialogues and that it has 10 books. And in the last book, uh, there is the discussion of the imitative art, that is poet, poetry and poets. Then we talked about some of the terms used in uh, the Republic. For example, tripartite soul, and we said that according to him, soul consists of three parts. The best part is the rational part, the reason then is the intermediate part the spirit and the appetite or the emotions are the worst is the worst part of the soul after this we talked about the three classes of the society the guardians the auxiliaries and the producers guardians are the best as we have uh, reason as the best in the soul we have guardians or philosopher kings best in the society, then the auxiliaries and the producers. After this, we discussed the, we have left this part, uh, which we might discuss later on, the exact contents of chapter number 10 uh, of the Republic. But mainly, uh, this chapter contains these four objections. And uh, we discussed uh, those four objections which were raised by Plato. His first argument was on metaphysical grounds. And uh, as you have um, learned this, that Aris Plato said that nature is itself imperfect copy and poets imitate it. Therefore, whatever the poets imitate is twice removed from reality. Poetry is a lie and poets are liars. This was his first argument. And it was on metaphysical grounds that he rejected poets and poetry. The second arg argument is on moral grounds. And on moral grounds, he rejects poets and poetry by saying that poets appeal to the worst part of the soul, that is the emotions. Therefore, poets have a bad effect on the morality of the people of the society. And therefore, they should not be given any place in his ideal state. The third argument is also on moral grounds and he said, says that actors identify themselves with other people and so is the audience. Audience also identify themselves with the uh, actors and actresses and therefore um, their uh, moral character uh, becomes uh, bad. They lose their own identity and their psychological makeup is disturbed. The fourth argument, as we have discussed, is inductive argument. He talks about Homer and tells us that Homer is the best of all poets. And uh, he has shown gods uh, fighting with each other. If the best of them could do such a bad thing, what would the worst of them do? Therefore, poets do not have any place in the ideal state, uh, that is the Republic. And this is our lecture for today, Aristotle's criticism of Plato. In the first uh, uh, two or three paragraphs, we will learn about uh, Aristotle a little. It is just an introduction to Aristotle. And we will learn that uh, he was uh, Plato's student. He used to go to Plato's academy where he would learn as a student. He would learn philosophy. And uh, the Greeks believed that whatever is checked with rationality, whatever is rational, 
uh, the study of that rational thing is philosophy. So even mathematics was philosophy for them. Uh, Aristotle was his pupil, but he was not like the other student of Plato. And uh, um, when he grew up, he started his own school or his own academy where he would teach his, philosophy, teach his philosophy and his philosophy was very different from the philosophy Plato. We call Plato as the idealist and uh, Aristotle as the realist. They are quite the opposite of each other. Uh, he did not follow his teacher but he created his own thoughts and uh, expressed those thoughts to us. Plato was an idealist which we have discussed already that he believed in the world of the ideas, that the ideas are real and uh, there is a world of, these, uh, of this um, state where the ideal things are present and we, the world, the whole world is a copy of that ideal and when the poets imitate nature or us or things in the world, they actually copy a photocopy and therefore, it is twice removed from reality. Uh, Aristotle believed that whatever we are and all the things of the world, they are real. And he refutes Plato's charges and he gives replies to Plato's charges. But these uh, replies are in different contexts and in different places. For example, the first charge which was on metaphysical grounds, uh, that charge is refuted when Aristotle discusses the theory of mimesis. Mimesis means, it's a Greek word, imitation, the theory of imitation or mimesis. And uh, the second charge is answered and replied uh, when he discusses his theory of tragedy. Um, we know that uh, Plato called poetry as imitation or uh, mimesis to use a Greek word and uh, by imitation he meant the inferior copy. The imitation for him was something which was not good because uh, imitator only imitates and that's a kind of lie and the person who imitates is kind of liar. Aristotle took the same word mimesis from Plato but he gave it a new meaning and uh, his idea of mimesis is a little different, not a little different, much different from uh, Plato. But of course, he is not naming anyone because Plato was his teacher. So if uh, he had criticized him by name, that would have been dis disrespectful for him. So he doesn't take any names, but he uh, gives replies to those charges which were raised by Plato against the poets and poetry. The first reply is this. We know that uh, Aristotle, uh, Plato had said that poets imitate an imitation which is an imperfect copy and uh, therefore it is twice removed from reality. This was his first objection. And therefore poetry is uh, a lie and poets are liars. But Aristotle's view was a little different and he did not believe that the poets imitate imitation because he said that uh, poets do not imitate what is or what has been because what is is uh, the scientific truth. Scientists talk about what is and has been is a historical truth. Histor uh, histor uh, his in history we read what has been but poets actually talk about what might be and ought to be and what might be and ought to be is uh, neither what is nor what has been it has its own truth uh, he also believed Aristotle that there isn't any world of ideals and that uh, idea is uh, a mental abstraction. A mental abstraction because it doesn't have any outside existence from outside the mind. There is no existence of the idea. 
and uh, therefore it is a kind of mental uh, abstraction he called it what exists according to aristotle that is real and uh, the world and whatever is in the world that is the people and the things they are the combination of two things one is a uh, form and the other is matter matter is something which abstracts the form uh, aristotle uses the word form plato used the word idea they are more or less similar but the words are used like this and uh, uh, aristotle believed that there is no matter which is without form and there is no form without matter and these two are important for each other and they are inseparable we have the combination of these two in all the matter uh, in all the things there is matter and there is form form is uh, the kind of force which wants to make or convert the matter into perfection and it always tries to mold the matter and to make it a perfect thing or a perfect person but matter by nature is obstructive it obstructs and uh, it would not uh, uh, want to be converted into the ideal so therefore there is a kind of hurdle in the path of uh, form form is the best thing it is uh, there in the matter in us and it tries to make us perfect to make us ideal but ideal cannot be achieved um sometimes in some people and in some matter the form is uh, successful to some extent and uh, sometimes it isn't so in those people and in those things where the form is uh, a little more successful those people and things become better as compared to those where the form is less successful therefore we have degrees and grades of people degrees and grades of things so as uh, we said this force succeeds sometimes more and sometimes less more in one type of persons and things and less in other type of persons and things so whatever the form was doing the form was actually trying to achieve the ideal it was trying to uh, give the ideal characteristics to the matter whatever the matter was and <clears throat> we can reach to uh, we can do this uh, we can reach the form with the help of thinking uh, by thinking a poet also tries to find out the ideal in each case and this is what the poet imitates the poet does not imitate the copy it imitates the form this uh, ideal is uh, actually imitated which cannot be achieved this uh, imitation is the imitation of the unrealized idea so the poet does not imitate particular thing he imitates uh, not falsehood but poetry has its own truth this truth is different from scientific truth this is different from historical truth scientists talk about what is historical people histo uh, they talk of historians talk about what has been but poet's truth is different because he talks about what might be or, or what ought to be poets imitate the form because the form tries to make the things the matter convert the matter into something ideal poets or poetry also want to make the people and convert them into the ideal which is the, the best of the things the poets can do so therefore poetic truth is not factual truth it is the ideal truth and poetry is not twice removed from reality the poet is a creator he creates things he tries to convert the thing into the ideal shape and converting something into ideal is the best type of job 
a man can do. This uh, uh, vision of unrealized things is given by poets to us in their poetry. ये उर्दू में सुन लें हमने ये इंट्रोडक्शन पढ़ी कि अरिस्टोटल ये प्लेटो का शागिर था और अरिस्टोटल रियलिस्ट था जबकि प्लेटो आइडियलिस्ट था जिसका मतलब ये है कि प्लेटो का ख्याल था कि आइडियल दुनिया मौजूद है उसमें हमारे हम आइडियली मौजूद हैं सारी चीज़ें जो मौजूद हैं वो रियल क्योंकि आइडियल उसके ख्याल में रियल है और हम उस आइडियल की कापी हैं हम रियल नहीं हैं और प्लेटो ने कहा कि नहीं ये दुनिया रियल है और ये इन रियलिटी सारा कुछ है आइडियल जो है ये एक मेंटल एब्सट्रैक्शन है और ये सोच के जरिए हम आइडियल पे पहुंचते हैं आउटसाइड हमारे जहन इसका कोई वजूद नहीं है और इसने अरिस्टोटल के प्लेटो के चार्जेस के खिलाफ आवाज उठाई अगर इसने कोई नाम नहीं लिया कि ये मैं उसके प्लेटो के खिलाफ बोल रहा हूँ क्योंकि प्लेटो उसका टीचर था इसने मुख्तलिफ कॉन्टेक्स्ट में इसके जवाब दिए हैं एक जगह पे जब वो अपनी थेरी ऑफ मेमिस बयान करता है जिसको हम पढ़ेंगे वहाँ पे जवाब देता है मेटाफिजिकल चार्ज की और फिर जब वो ट्रेजिडी डिस्कस करता है जिसको हम करेंगे तो उसमें जवाब देता है दूसरे ऑब्जेक्शन की जो कि मॉरल बुनियाद पे था प्लेटो ने जब पोइट्री की बात की तो उसने मेमिसिस का लफ्ज इस्तेमाल किया और यही लफ्स अरिस्टोटल ने भी इस्तेमाल किया लेकिन प्लेटो ने इसको इन्फीरियर कापी समझा कि ये इन्फीरियर कापी है जबकि अरिस्टोटल ने इसको एक नया रंग दिया और इसकी चार्जेस के जवाब दिए और इसके फर्स्ट चार्ज का जवाब दिया फर्स्ट चार्ज इसका ये था कि पोइट्स ये कापी करते हैं वर्ल्ड को और वर्ल्ड तो ऑलरेडी आइडियाज की कापी है तो इसकी ये कापी की कापी करते हैं ये इम्परफेक्ट कापी है तो आइस रिमूव फ्रॉम रियलिटी है तो ये झूठ है और अरिस्टोटल ने कहा कि ये इमिटेशन जो पोइट करता है ये इमिटेशन व्हाट इज की इमिटेशन नहीं है जो साइंटिफिक ट्रूथ है ना ये व्हाट हैज बिन की इमिटेशन है जो हिस्टोरिकल ट्रूथ है बल्कि ये कहता है वट माइट बी और ऑट टू बी वट माइट बी और ऑट टू बी आइडियल है यानी कैसा आपको कैसा होना चाहिए ये पॉइंट बयान करता है आप कैसे होंगे तो बेस्ट होंगे ये पॉइंट बयान करता है और ये बयान करना तो आइडियल के करीब है वो आप कब आपको बताता है कि आप आइडियल कैसे बन सकते हैं उसके ख्याल में आइडिया जो है ये मेंटल एब्सट्रैक्शन है आइडिया जो है ये जहन के बाहर कोई वजूद नहीं रखता और इसका अचीव करना नामुमकिन है हाँ मुख्तलफ लोग इसको अचीव करने की कोशिश कर सकते हैं और इसकी अचीव करने की कोशिश पोइट भी करता है पोइट आपको बताता है वट आट टू बी एंड माइट बी कि आपको क्या हो आपको कैसे आइडियल होना चाहिए और ये ख़ास तौर पर लफ्ज़ फाम इस्तेमाल करता है कि जो दुनिया की चीज़ें हैं या दुनिया में इंसान है ये मैटर से बने हैं और फॉर्म से बने हैं जिसको आप नफ्स और रूह भी कह सकते हैं वो ऐसे अल्फाज इस्तेमाल नहीं करता लेकिन आप इसकी एनालॉजी ले सकते हैं कि मैटर है और फॉर्म है मैटर चाहता है कि वो चीज़ों को ख़राब करे ज़मीन की तरफ खेचे फॉर्म चाहता है कि वो चीज़ों को आइडियल बनाए ऊपर की तरफ खेचे और ये फॉर्म ये रूह ये कोशिश करता है कि मैटर को अपने सांचे में डालें लेकिन मैटर या नफ्स ये मानता नहीं है क्योंकि ये अब्सट्रक्टिव है ये रुकावटें खड़ी करता है 
اس فورس کے خلاف لہذا بعض لوگوں میں کسی ڈگری تک سو روح یا فارم کامیاب ہوتا ہے تو وہ اچھے بنتے ہیں بعض چیزوں میں زیادہ کامیاب ہوتے ہیں وہ اچھی چیزیں بنتی ہیں بعض میں کم کامیاب ہوتا ہے تو وہ نسبتاً کم اچھے بنتے ہیں تو یہ جو طاقت ہے بعض لوگوں میں زیادہ کامیاب ہوتی ہے بعض لوگوں میں کم کامیاب ہوتی ہے بہرحال فورس یہ جو فورس ہے فارم ہے یہ کوشش کرتی ہے کہ میٹر کو آئیڈیل بنائیں اور اس آئیڈیل تک پہنچنے کے لیے پوائٹس سوچوں سے کام لیتا ہے اور وہ اس کے بارے میں سوچتا ہے اور معلوم کرتا ہے کہ آئیڈیل کیا ہوگا اور کیسے ہوگا اور پوائٹس اسی کو امیٹیٹ کرتا ہے یعنی پوائٹس فارم کو امیٹیٹ کرتا ہے اور فارم کا کام آئیڈیل بنانا ہے اور پوائٹ کا کام ہی آئیڈیل بنانا ہے تو پوائٹ تو دا بیسٹ آف آل ہو گیا کیونکہ وہ فارم سے سیملیرٹی رکھتا ہے اور وہ ایمیٹیٹ تو کرتا ہے لیکن ایسے آئیڈیا کو جو ان ریالائزڈ ہیں اور اس کو ریالائز تو کوئی نہیں کر سکتا لیکن ریالائز کرنے کی کوشش کرتا ہے تو وہ کسی خاص چیز کو ایمیٹیٹ نہیں کرتا بلکہ وہ ایمیٹیٹ کرتا ہے آئیڈیا کو ان ریالائزڈ آئیڈیا کو اور آئیڈیا یا آئیڈیل بنانا یہ ممکن نہیں ہے تو کسی حد تک کامیاب اگر ہو جائے فارم تو وہ اچھا انسان بن جائے گا لیکن پوائٹس جو ہے وہ اسی فارم کا کام کرتا ہے اسی فارم کی نقل اتارتا ہے لہذا وہ جھوٹ نہیں بولتا پوئٹری کی اپنی سچائی ہے سائنس کی اپنی سچائی ہے تاریخ کی اپنی سچائی ہے سائنس آپ کو وٹ از کے بارے میں بتاتا ہے ہسٹری آپ کو وٹ ہیز بن کے بارے میں بتاتا ہے پوائٹس ان دونوں کے بارے میں نہیں بتاتا پوائٹس بتاتا ہے وٹ مائٹ بی اور آٹ ٹو بی کے بارے میں لہذا پوائٹک ٹروتھ یہ فیکچوئل نہیں فیکچوئل ٹروتھ نہیں ہے یہ آئیڈیل ٹروتھ ہے اور یہ پوائٹک ٹروتھ ہے تو اس لحاظ سے یہ ٹوائس ریموڈ فرام ریالٹی نہیں ہے آرٹسٹ تو کریٹر ہے جس طرح فارم چیزوں کو مولڈ کرنے کی کوشش کرتا ہے یہ مولڈ کر کے کیسے ہوں گی یہ ہمیں پتہ نہیں ہے لیکن آرٹسٹ آپ کو بتاتا ہے کہ یہ اگر مولڈ ہو گئی تو پھر یہ کیسے ہوں گی تو یہ تو کریشن ہو گیا ایک چیز جو آپ کو پتہ نہیں ہے کہ کیسے ہوگی آرٹسٹ آپ کو بتاتا ہے کہ یہ ایسے ہو جائے گی وہ اس کو ایسے بناتا ہے تو وہ کریٹو ہو گیا اور یہ ویژن ہو گیا ان ریئلائزڈ تھنگس کا تو یہ پہلے سوال کا جواب ہوا کہ پوائٹس جو ہیں فوٹو کاپی کو کاپی کرتے ہیں تو ٹوائس ریموڈ فرام ریالٹی ہے ارسٹاٹل نے بتا دیا کہ نہیں ٹوائس ریموڈ فرام ریالٹی نہیں ہے وہ اصل میں بات کرتا ہے فارم کی کہ فارم اگر کامیاب ہو گیا آئیڈیل بنانے میں چیز کو یا شخص کو تو وہ آئیڈیل کیسے ہوگا یہ آئیڈیل کسی نے دیکھا نہیں ہے شاعر آپ کو کریٹ کر کے یہ دکھاتا ہے کہ یہ آئیڈیل ایسے ہوگا اور یہ وٹ آٹ ٹو بی اور مائٹ بی کی بات ہے سو دس واز ہز فسٹ رپلائی ٹو پلیٹو سو دس واز ارسٹاٹل فسٹ رپلائی ٹو پلیٹو چونکہ یہ لیکچر بہت لمبا ہو جائے گا اگر ہم چاروں رپلائی ایک ہی ویڈیو میں دیں تو ہم نیکسٹ لیکچر سیکنڈ رپلائی جو ہے وہ نیکسٹ لیکچر میں کریں گے تھینک یو اینڈ گڈ لک